Hey everyone, Jad here. This week on Team Fight Breakdown, we're looking at a 4-1 split push technique SK Telecom T1 used in the finals of Worlds 2016 against Samsung Galaxy. 53 minutes into game one, SKT positioned Duke's Trundle in the top lane and the rest of their team in the mid lane. This puts Samsung in a constant bind. In a straight up 1v1, Cuvee's Poppy can't deal enough damage to Trundle to prevent an inhibitor death. So Samsung need to always threaten Duke with more than one person. This gives SKT's four-man squad ample opportunity to try and start fights while Samsung's fight lines are in shambles. Let's get into it. As Ambition and Crown are returning to their base from pushing Duke back in the top lane, SKT managed to catch Ruler with an undertow from Bangi's Olaf and a deadly flourish from Bang's Jin. Since Ruler is one of the highest threats on Samsung, SKT see this as an opportunity to start a full-on fight. Bang's Jin opens up with a curtain call, and Bangi Ragnaroks in for Ruler. This is where we see Samsung's item choices come into play. This late in the game, every carry is at max items. The difference is that Crown and Ruler actually chose to sell their boots for more damage, whereas SKT decided to favor mobility for their carries. This actually helps Samsung here, as the only way to stop a Ragnarok Olaf with Ghost is by killing him. Ruler and Crown quickly burst Bengi, and with an exhaust from Core JJ Zyra, he's forced to retreat from the fight. Since Cuvee's Poppy isn't there to help tank yet, thanks to SKT's split push, and since Samsung just used a lot of their damage bursting Bengi, Faker's Orianna looks to make a play. He finds access to the three highest threat targets on Samsung, Crown's Victor, Ruler's Caitlyn, and Core JJ Zyra. Faker ghosts in and casts Command, Attack, and Dissonance onto Crown and Core JJ. This combo takes Core JJ to half health, making him immediately flash back in fear of Faker's Shockwave. Here's where the fight gets incredibly close. Faker flashes forward in hopes of catching Crown in a Shockwave combo, but he doesn't move his ball fast enough before Crown uses Ghost and runs away. With his flash used, Faker's in an extremely vulnerable position, especially since Cuvee's Poppy just arrived. Cuvee flashes, getting in range for Heroic Charge, but he narrowly misses the wall, so Faker isn't stunned. Faker immediately turns to issue a command attack towards Crown and cast Shockwave, which just catches him. Faker then hits Crown with command attack as well as launching an auto attack, procking his Thunderlords and killing Crown before using his Zonius. This was so close, we're going to go over it one more time. Had Cuvee flashed at a different angle, he could have stunned Faker against the wall, allowing Crown and Ruler to kill him during the stun duration. Also, had Crown kept his boots in his item build instead of Luden's Echo, he may have had enough move speed not only to escape Faker's Shockwave, but also to live and return fire on Faker. Finally, Crown had one second left on his cooldown of Flash when hit by the Shockwave. Had Flash been up, he could have dodged Shockwave that way. Incredibly close. Back to the fight. As Faker's in Zonia's stasis, SKT recalibrate and look for the highest threat target, Ruler's Caitlyn. Ruler's prepping to burst Faker as he exits stasis, but doesn't realize how close he's sitting to Faker's Orianna Ball. With one last attack and dissonance combo, Faker manages to chunk Ruler for 65% of his health then dies. This puts Ruler in kill range, and SKT completely sell out to go for it. Duke casts Subjugate to lower Ruler's resistances, and Bang flashes in with his fourth bullet in the chamber, landing a 1410 damage crit to secure the kill. But even though Bang killed Ruler, he flashed into a terrible position. Cuvee turns and heroic charges Bang against Duke's Trundle Pillar, and Core JJ casts Strangle Thorns under him. Once freed from the crowd control, Bang quickly snipes Ambition, popping his GA before falling to Cube. For SKT, it's okay if Bang dies, as long as they eliminate the biggest threats on Samsung. Duke turns to Core JJ and throws a pillar down to block his retreat. He then chomps him down, killing Core JJ to remove the last of Samsung's three highest threats. Since SKT had previously killed all of Samsung's Nexus turrets, they know that all they have to do is walk up to the Nexus and kill it and they also realize that Samsung now lacks the damage to kill Duke or Bangi. So they focus solely on killing the inhibitor, then turn straight for Samsung's Nexus, which Samsung have no hope of defending. Looking back, SKT's 4-1 split push removed Samsung's tanks from the front line of the fight and left the path open for the damage dealers to go head-to-head. -head. SKT, and Faker in particular, 
took a huge risk when going for the assassination of Samsung's backline. Had Faker missed his shockwave, or had Cube managed to stun Faker, Samsung could have won the fight. Once SKT managed to kill Samsung's damage dealers, however, it was an easy push onwards to the Nexus. With the teamfight win, SK Telecom T1 took a 1-0 lead in the series. They went on to play five thrilling games against Samsung, eventually defeating them 3-2 to claim their third League of Legends World Championship.